Yo, what's good YouTube? Welcome to this new tutorial. Today we're gonna learn how to mix a beat. I'm gonna show you seven different steps to mix your beat. Let's not wait and let's look at what those seven steps are. As an example, I'm gonna take the same beat as a previous tutorial. Let's look at the first step. Here it's just about cleaning up your session. So put a name on every tracks and also place your tracks in a logical order. For example, I like to have my kick, my snare, my rim shot, then the hi-hats, then the bass. Of course, you can change the name. For example, here I can put 808 bass. You can also delete all the regions or the files you don't need. One thing you can do is to create a bus and to group your tracks together. For example, here if I wanted to put the piano together, I can create a piano bus, select your tracks, right click and then create track stack, then click on summing. When it's done, when you have all your tracks, you can move on to the next step. This is the second step and it's all about balance. Find the right volumes between all the tracks. For example, by default, the snare is way too loud. For the hi-hats, you also need to find the right balance. Then it also depends on the style. For example, in drills, sometimes the drums are really loud and the other instruments are pretty quiet. But in my case, it's a melodic drill beat and I want to hear well the melody, of course. I want my piano to be a bit more upfront. that. One very important thing for mastering is that you always want to hit below 0 dB. You never want to go on the red and you never want to hit 0 dB. Don't worry too much if your beat is not super loud just yet. That's what you'll do at the final step, which is the mastering step. When you're happy with your balance, you adjusted the volumes, you can move on to step number three. We're gonna talk about EQs and I'm gonna show you how to use Logic Pro's EQ. I've already talked about EQs on vocals on my previous tutorials, but here we're gonna look at EQs on instruments. Very short break, if you want to know how I went from this sound. To this sound. Then you need to watch my previous tutorial, link in the description to watch it. Let's get back to this mixing tutorial, I'm just going to talk about the EQ here. As you can see, I cut the low frequencies and I turned down the highs as well a little bit. If you're not sure, that's how you can do it in Logic Pro. You can cut the low frequencies like that. Basically, you want to cut the lows because it sounds muddy and it's gonna clash with the kick and the bass. So always cut it around 150 or 200 hertz. For the high frequencies around 5k to 20k, it usually helps to push an instrument up front. Here, I turn them down because I want to leave those frequencies for the drums and also more specifically for the singer or for the rapper. By turning down those high frequencies, it sounds a bit more vintage, a bit more lo-fi. Mm -hmm. 
here it's a bit different. I added an EQ on my keys bus. This EQ will affect all the tracks of this bus, meaning the pianos and the keys. Here I decided to turn down the 200 and 300 hertz area. It sounds a bit clearer like that. It just cleans everything. Those kind of details really help all your instruments to fit well in the mix. For the drums, I usually don't play too much with the EQs because I always want to find a sample that I really like, so I don't really tweak it. One thing you can do sometimes is to place an EQ on the kick. Sometimes you can turn down the lows a bit. You don't want to turn it down too much because the low frequencies are really important for kick drum. Sometimes you can cut a bit in the mids. And a trick you can do sometimes is to boost the highs so your kick will sound a bit more punchy and with all the beat you're gonna hear it a bit more. That's one thing you can do depending on what you want to achieve, but I don't do it too much. Again, if you can afford it, try this plugin because you'll be able to solo the frequencies. That's all I had to say for the EQs, we can now move on. Let's talk about compression, and one thing you need to know is that your one-shot samples are already compressed, so I'm not going to compress too much my drum samples, but you can compress your whole drum kit. For the drums, you can try to use this compressor or a VCA. If you have many different tracks on the bus, you can also compress them together. For example, I could compress all the piano. Distortion and overdrive are a bit different than the compressor, but it's quite similar and I would say it's the same category of effect. Here for the drums, you can try an overdrive. For the drums, you probably want to saturate the highs. This plugin is quite powerful, for example, here for the drums. It sounds like they are louder, but if you look at the output level, it's the same. And now with the plugin, With the other instruments, that's without the plugin. And that's with the plugin. And that's a very good trick if you want your drums to hit super hard. For this step, we're gonna talk about reverb. Generally, you can put reverb on guitars, piano, synth, pretty much any melodic instrument, but just be careful, you don't want to use reverb on kick and on bass. That's the piano without the reverb. If you're not sure for a reverb, you need to create a bus. And here, try Chroma Verb or Space Designer. Then select the type of reverb you want and turn up the volume of the bus, which is going to be the volume of the reverb. You can also add a bit of reverb on the snare. Just be careful, don't add too much reverb. And that's without the reverb. It's very dry. And that's with the reverb. Finally, on the instruments, you can also add a bit of delay, a bit of echo.
That's it for the reverb, we can move on. We're gonna talk about panning, meaning the left and the right channel. For the hi-hat, a cool trick you can do is make them go from the left to the right. You can play with the depth. And the rate. If you have more than one hi-hat, you can have one on the left side and the other one on the right side. Finally, if you want to push an instrument on the side, you can use a stereo spread. It just pushes everything on the side. And again, if you like, you can have an instrument on the left and the other one on the right channel. That's really up to you and to your taste. That's the last step and it's all about automation. I have a dedicated video about automation, so check it out if you want to know more about it. But here I just did a little automation on the keys. Of course, you can also do a fade-in for an intro, for example. That's basically a volume automation. Again, I'm not going to go more into automation. Let me just add a limiter on the stereo out. That's the most basic mastering you can do. boost the gain to have a tiny bit of reduction here. That's it for today's tutorial, I hope you liked it. Let me know what you think in the comments. If you've learned something, don't forget to subscribe to my channel and hit the like button. I'll see you very soon for a new tutorial. Take care, bye bye.